Walk Hall here in Atlantic City, the next stop for the heavyweight career of one Andre Bishop. How's it feel? Feels good. Feels real good. Good. Because you got to knock this guy out with him. It's time to show the world that Andre Bishop is as good as Neil. Bishop's really keyed in for this one. You can see it as he makes his walk to the ring. Stewart's poise is one of those things that cannot be denied. This is a very confident fight. Boardwalk right, Hall in Atlantic City, home to our time. heavyweight fight tonight Let's touch between up. Andre Bishop and Reggie Stewart. Of course, Bishop has been labeled the comeback kid. Now trying to make a go of it as a heavyweight, the former middleweight, fast-rising prospect, hurt his right hand in his last fight against Meldrick Johnson. Now he's back, and trainer Gus Carisi is not worried, telling anybody who would listen, Bishop is fine. The right hand is healed, and watch out, he's on the attack. Well, that's easy for him to say, but the fighter has to feel that it's all right. You know, it's a mental thing. In the gym with the big gloves, with the headgear, yeah, it's been okay. Now with the small gloves, no headgear, early on, you have to wonder whether or not there's going to be a little hesitation in throwing that hand. How about that left hand? Good job, it was sudden, Keep it was moving. fast, Keep it was moving. direct by Stewart. On, you remember when Andre Bishop was a good, hard-charging middleweight prospect? He was a great combination puncher. That's what he's doing now as a heavyweight here. Halfway through round number one. I hope Reggie Stewart didn't think Andre Bishop wasn't going to throw that right hand. He has no qualms about letting it go. Nice work, the left hand to the head. That's great stuff. He fires one right back after taking one. Gotta love the word by Reggie Stewart. That's a tough moment for Andre Bishop right now. He's hurt. I can hear his corners. Solid. Is this the end for Andre Bishop now? He has some questions to answer after being floored by that power punch. Well, this is like a microcosm of his life. He's been down outside the ring before and has gotten up too. And that will serve him because he has survived very difficult things outside the ring. And he is thinking of that right now, believe me. Very accurate with the overhand right. Keep your head moving. And now he's targeting upstairs. And that does it for this round. Andre Bishop's got a good relationship with his corner, but now it needs to pay off. He was down in that last round. They need to get to work. The other day when we were talking to Andre Bishop, he said to have success in this fight, I have to leave. Did you see that? Oh, and now the real test. Can he get up after going down a second time? Stand up! Stand up! Three, four, five. Get up, get up! Bishop still in a tough spot here. Don't get fooled just thinking he beat the count and everything's fine. And I'm not so sure that he can grab. So what you got to do now if you're a trainer, the way you taught him in the gym is you don't want to go grab because you might leave yourself open. Move your head when he comes to you, then you grab him. 
Stewart's done a good job there offensively scoring with that left hand. Good flush shot upstairs. For those of you who question Andre Bishop's broken right hand, here's a good example of how he feels about it. He's throwing it, really frustrating his opponent now. Stewart's so defensively sound, it doesn't make for an easy target. No, it doesn't. Bishop is hurt. Oh, Bishop took some serious damage right there. Now you gotta wonder whether or not he knows how to survive. Another flush shot up top. And you see what he can do when he sends that right to the head. Oh, he is stunned. He could go down. He got blocked. Oh! How is this going to go on once again he hits the deck? Well, he's getting practice at it, so he might figure it out. So many were questioning the injured right hand of Andre Bishop. How about the chin? Bishop's showing you that intensity. That's so... And they are underway. Round number one of this much-anticipated scheduled eight-round bout. Oh, a nice two-punch combo by Stewart. There's a right hand by Andre Bishop, and another, that's a good sign. Stewart's a smart fighter, and in doing so, the smart thing to do for him would be to utilize his jab. He's got a good one. Yeah, and he's confident with it. See, it's one thing having a good one. You know how many people out there are good at certain things, but they don't have the confidence, they don't know it. He knows that he's good with it. That's the key. That's a good job by Bishop offensively. Landing his combinations is a key to victory tonight. Stewart's blocking ability is doing well for him there. In a matchup like this, Teddy, we know the outside fighter is going to try to stay away from that power puncher. But what about the outside fighter putting forth his own offense? What can we look for and expect from him? Well, distance will create offense for him. Misses will create offense. What he has to do is allow the aggressive fighter, the power guy, to do some of his work for him. When he tries to get in, make a miss, make him pay. Range, range. Little head hunting with the left. A razor sharp hook to the head by Andre Bishop. Oh, a good right hand by Andre Bishop. Able to land another power shot early on here, Teddy. Does he have to worry about trying to keep up this pace? No, I don't think so. If he keeps at this pace, he's not going to be around to worry. Okay, good round, kid. Right to the Here we go, round two is underway. Andre Bishop getting to his opponent's head. Nice job by Bishop with the power shot. I hope Reggie Stewart didn't think Andre Bishop wasn't gonna throw that right hand. He has no qualms about letting it go. And from long he's able to get his target he wanted and when you have somebody throwing long punches what you don't want to do is what he did pull back straight to the head he goes with a left hand was a left hand that came raining in on him. He does. What a big shot. He is down from that left. One, two, three, four, five. Stewart's able to get up. Teddy, I question.
question, though, if he'll be able to go on. What does he have to do? Well, he's got to know what to do, but what not to do. Don't use your legs. Don't try to move because that's, that's the inclination. Get on your bicycle when you've been hurt. No, the bicycle's not there. You got flat tires. What you got to do is grab on the inside and clear your head. Wow, a big flush blow, the left hand by Stewart. well-placed hook to the head. How about that? Another right hand. Stewart's cut is really a mess right now, and it could jeopardize this fight for him right here. Teddy, is there blame that needs to be placed on his cut man? Could he have done more? Well, really, the trick to being a cut man is pretty simple. It's not rocket science. That uppercut absolutely rocked him. Well, I don't like the way his legs look at all right now. Now I want you to use the ring and keep your distance. Listen, I'm not going to stand here and watch you take those shots, you understand me? Stewart's gets a chance at redemption here with a fresh round, but Teddy, I'm always concerned as to how a fighter looks after he's been knocked down in the last round. Well, it depends how much experience he has. Eh? That's a... There it is! Remember earlier, he was on the canvas. Now he's looking down on his opponent. And we thought it was a bad thing earlier for him. It turned out to be a bad thing for his opponent because he got careless here. So Bishop gets up and beats the count, but now comes the critical time. Now he has to do two things. One, he has to survive, kill a little bit of time, and understand why he got put down in the first place so he don't make the same mistake. You know Andre Bishop's trainer is going to be really thrilled to see him do that there. He doesn't want to see his fighter get hit too much tonight. That was a nice block. Stewart's the kind of boxer that wants to do just that. Find the target, get the combination working, land both punches. Well-targeted left hand by Stewart. Teddy, he's trying to punch his way out of this damage he's incurred, but that's not the answer. No, he's in a rainstorm. He needs an umbrella. And instead, he's running right out into the rain. Halfway through this round here. That's as good as it gets right there. A crushing uppercut by Reggie Stewart. Do you see any way in which he can take his opponent's aggression and turn it against him? Yeah, the perfect way. I mean, boxing 101, counterpunching. You got a guy coming at you, no better way than to change his mind. Make him miss, make him pay. And now you see the southpaw pulling the trigger with the straight left. my favorite punch there is and a power shot lands and all of a sudden it turns the tables a little slow with that jab and he got caught the right hand for those of you who question andre bishop's broken right hand here's a good example of how he feels about it he's throwing it So Andre Bishop returns to trainer Gus Carisi after being tagged in that last round. What is Gus going to say to him? Oh, well, he's going to say something like, as soon as those birds stop singing in your head, concentrate on why you got hit. You didn't move your head after your last punch. Don't let that happen again. Bishop's opponent is not seeing the damaged goods he was up. Oh, a big shot comes home for him. And he goes down again. Will he get up from this? One, two, three, four, five. There is no doubt that Andre Bishop's right hand is perfectly fine. An impressive knockout victory with that right mitt. He takes care of Reggie Stewart in spectacular fashion. Isaac, which Bishop brother hits harder? Which Bishop brother hits harder? That's your question? I get these people. Well, neither one of them can punch like me. I can guarantee you that. But between the two of them? Well, I'd say little Andre hits harder. I mean, the jailbird's washed up now. I mean, he was a genuine contender. The big baby. Well, the big baby has always been a pretender.
From the Thomas and Mack Center here in Las Vegas, we present heavyweight action. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas with you as Andre Bishop looks to stay perfect as he faces Dwight Cooper. We went over the rules in the dressing room. Let's have a good, clean fight. Touch them up. This is going to be a challenge for both. Cooper catches Bishop clean. And oh no, there's blood over the right eye. Andre Bishop is now in a tough spot. Well, his corner man's going to have to take care of The cup man's going to have to stop that fleet. But that has to serve as a warning of things to come. Be aware now. Be better. Good jab by Cooper. Good one-two from Bishop. He landed that right hand flush against Cooper. And now we see that cut, and that's become a very inviting target. He has to make sure that he doesn't only see that cut, though, because he might get a little over-anxious, get a little heavy only on that side. I think Bishop scored really well there. He just damaged his opponent with that power shot upstairs. And right from the start, he's throwing the power punches and landing them. I think he has a date and he wants to get to it. Teddy, talk to me about this matchup from a defensive side of the game when you have two speedy fighters matching up. Well, you know what? I'm going to whisper in my guy's ear a little bit. I'm going to say, you know what? Use his speed against him. Step out a little bit. Let him shadow box a little bit. There's nobody there. And when he misses, step right back in. Make him pay. Cooper trying to get away from Bishop's attack. Bishop scoring with that right hand. A very crisp combination by Andre Bishop. Solid left hand to the head. Looking to the body. You remember when Andre Bishop was a good hard-charging middleweight prospect? He was a great combination puncher. That's what he's doing now as a heavyweight here. Dwight Cooper's left hook landed the most damaging blow of this fight. And the blood above Andre Bishop's right eye is becoming much more substantial. That's a bad cut. Now the corner has to do their work. But the fighter, I usually don't say this, but he has to go out there and not worry about winning this round so much. He has to worry about defense. Don't get touched on that cut anymore. Give the work that the corner man did. Dwight Cooper's score. Oh, and there you go. He just fought the other guy's fight, and now it's not his fight at all. He is down. No, he should have been on the inside. He pulled out, pulled out into a world of trouble, a world of punches. Two, three, four, five. Cooper's back up on his feet. What will he look like in the next few moments of this fight? That's the big question. Bishop able to land solidly against Cooper. He just got rocked moments ago. He was the one hurting his opponent. Reminds you of the song, I can do anything you can do, only better. The other day when we were talking to Andre Bishop, he said to have success in this fight, I have to land combinations. Hey, he landed too. a good Let's one there. Go. Now that looks like a middleweight fighting a heavyweight there. Look at the hand speed from Bishop. And that's exactly the advantage he was going to need coming into this fight to beat the bigger man. Comes right back at him with a left hand. Move your head! Scored well up top. Good combination by Andre Bishop. There's Cooper putting out. He gets to him with an uppercut. Oh, man, he's in rough shape after absorbing that blow. Oh, he's hurt. He was hurt right there, but now he's grabbing on like it's a life preserver. And he's gonna... And bang, and away he goes. And he crashes to the canvas once again. He's gotten up before. What about this time? One, two, three, four, five. Dwight 
Cooper probably thought he had everything going his way early, but it is Andre Bishop standing tall with a knockout victory. DL has agreed to a fight between you and Kobe Nichols. If we beat Nichols, we'll be in the top 10. What are the conditions? He says there aren't any. There's always conditions with DL. I'm sure we'll find out what they are, but we really need this fight. <laughs>